And this chapter is entitled Something to do with Lord and Singer Dave. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Satyam Vidatum Nija Britya Bashitam Satyam Vidatum Nija Britya Bashitam Vyaptim Cha Buteshu Akileshu Chatmana Vyaptim Cha Buteshu Akileshu Chatmana Adrishya Tatya Dvuta Rupam Udvahan Adrishya Tatya Dvuta Rupam Ud Udvahan Some Sanskrit's easier than others, isn't it? Stambe Sabayam Na Mrigam na manusham stambe sabayam na mrigam na manusham satyam vidatum nija bhritya bashitam vyaptim chabuteshva kileshu chatmana Adrishya tat yad buta rupam udvahan. Stambe sabaya gam manusham. Satyam vidatum nija bhritya bashitam. Vyaptim chabute shvakile shuchatmana. Adrisha Tatya Dbuta Rupa Mudvahan Stambe Sabayam Namrigam Namanusham Ladies. Satyam true Vidatum to prove 
Vidyabrityabashitam. The words of his own servant, Prahlad Maharaj, who had said that his Lord is present everywhere. Vyaptim, the pervasion, Cha and Bhuteshu, among the living entities and elements. Akileshu, all Cha also. Atmana of himself, Adrishyata, who has seen Ati, very Adbuta, wonderful, Rupam, form, Udvahan, taking Stambe in the pillar, Sabhayam, within the assembly, Na, not, Brigam, an animal. Na, nor Manusham, a human being. Translation. To prove that the statement of a servant, Prahlad Maharaj, was substantial, in other words, to prove that the Supreme Lord is present everywhere, even within the pillar of an assembly hall, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, exhibited a wonderful form never before seen. The form is neither that of a man nor that of a lion. Thus the Lord appeared in his wonderful form in the assembly hall. Please repeat. To prove that the statement of his servant Prahlad Maharaj was substantial. In other words, to prove that the Supreme Lord is present everywhere, even within the pillar of an assembly hall, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, exhibited a wonderful form never before seen. The form was neither that of a man nor that of a lion. <clears throat> Thus the Lord appeared in his wonderful form in the assembly hall. When Hiranyakashpu asked Prahlad Maharaj, where is your Lord? Is he present in this pillar? Prahlad Maharaj fearlessly replied, Yes, my Lord is present everywhere. Therefore, to convince Hiranyakashpu that the statement of Prahlad Maharaj was unmistakably true, the Lord appeared from the pillar. The Lord appeared as half lion and half man, so that Hiranyakashpu could not understand whether the great giant was a lion or a human being. To substantiate Prahlad's statement, the Lord proved that his devotee, as declared in Bhagavad Gita, is never vanquished. Kontiya Patijani hi nami bhakta panashati. Prahlad Maharaj's demoniac father had repeatedly threatened to kill Prahlad, but Prahlad was confident that he could not be killed, since he was protected by the Supreme Lord. By appearing from the pillar, the Lord encouraged his devotees, saying, in effect, don't worry, I'm present here. By manifesting his form as Nusingadev, the Lord also preserved the truth of Lord Brahman's promise that Hiranyakashpu was not to be killed by any animal or any man. The Lord appeared in a form that could not be said to be fully a man or a lion. Om Agyana Timarandasya Gananjana Salakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasma Shri Gurave Nama Tam Kuroti Vachalam Pangam Laga Tegarim Yatripa Tamam Vande Shri Gurim Dinataranam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Janadha Rasi Vasadi Gauravata Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hare Hare I would like to refer to it as well. To prove that the statement of a servant, Prahlad Maharaj, was substantial, in other words, to prove that the Supreme Lord is present everywhere, even within the pillar of an assembly hall, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, exhibited a wonderful form never before seen. The form was neither that of a man nor that of a lion. This Lord appeared in his wonderful form in the assembly hall. Interesting... Uh, had a conversation with some senior devotees recently and they were saying that Lord Nisingadev is the original child protection officer. 
<laughs> Within this gone there, they're setting up some child protection things because in, in this material world, you know, there's some uh, unscrupulous people who will take advantage of uh, innocent persons. <clears throat> so Lorna Singdev, he showed here that his devotee will never be vanquished. Prahlad Maharaj was confident that if Krishna wants to kill me, who can save me? And if Krishna wants to save me, who can kill me? Because he had full faith in Krishna, he wasn't thinking that he was able to protect himself in some way. This is the interesting uh, position of the devotee that make themselves very vulnerable in that they don't take shelter in some kind of material protection. But that vulnerability means that the... Uh, uh, they're not just doing that with no other um, shelter, but because they're taking shower only in Krishna, which means there'll be occasions where we have to, our, our faith will be tested. And Krishna's not testing our faith to see what we're doing. He's omni omniscient. He's present everywhere and he knows everything, but he's given us the opportunity to take shelter further and further. So like we could just say, okay, today I'm going to surrender, and we could surrender today, but that doesn't mean to say, okay, job's done, that's it, we can put our feet up. We have to surrender each day, each moment, actually, <clears throat> because we're always faced with this choice in the material world to either take shelter in Krishna's inferior energy, maya, or <clears throat> the spirit energy, the paraprakriti, uh, Krishna himself. And uh, Krishna... Teaches us in Bhagavad Gita, Daivi He Shagunamayi, Mama Maya Durat Yaya, Mam Eva Me Papajanti, Mam Eva Tarantiti. This divine energy of mind known as Maya is very difficult to overcome. Krishna's putting it mildly by saying it's very difficult to overcome, it's impossible. <clears throat> now, sometimes people they want to swim the English Channel or they want to climb the highest mountain and they think that somehow or another they've conquered material nature. Or they build a giant ship called the Titanic, and they're very proud that this unsinkable ship is, uh, you know, can cannot be sunk. Uh, once again, we've shown our might as the human beings of superior intelligence, and on its maiden voyage, then they're humiliated. Their pride is humiliated. So, <clears throat> of course, it's a shame that so many people suffer on account of these things. But uh, this is also. When the Lord um, humiliates the devotee or humiliates human society, he doesn't do it purposefully to make them suffer, but they're up against material nature. And material nature is very cruel from the point of view of the non-devotee because they want to enjoy and they want to enjoy eternally, but material nature won't allow them to do that. And this was Hiranyakashipu's uh, mood. He wanted to simply enjoy whatever he set eyes upon. That was his, I, me, and mine. <clears throat> if he seen someone else's wife and he fancied them, then he would just take them. He would have a whole harem of uh, ladies whom he had abducted. And uh, he was so powerful that even the demigods, they were afraid of him. But Prahlad Maharaj, a young boy, five years old, he wasn't afraid of him because he had full faith in Krishna and he knew that if Mari Krishna Rakike, Raki Krishna Marike, if Krishna wants to kill me, then who can save me? And he is the personification of that. <clears throat> if Krishna wants to save me, who can kill me? So if uh, we've seen all the different ways which Hiranyakashipu tried to kill Prahlad Maharaj. Here, Prabhupada very mildly puts it that his demonic father had repeatedly threatened to kill Prahlad Maharaj. So, Srila Prabhupada didn't see that he actually uh, tried to kill him, but he said threatened to because just as Prahlad Maharaj knew, Srila Prabhupada also knows that um, the demon could not kill Prahlad unless Krishna allowed it. 
So I would like to ask the devotees, can any of them, anyone name one of the ways in which Rani Kashpu tried to kill Prahlad? Sheesh. Try to throw him from a mountain top, yeah. John. Uh, same mountain or a different one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he tried to get elephants to uh first of all when he when he was thrown from the mountain then Krishna caught him. And uh, when he, he tried to get elephants to to uh, trample him, then the elephants it says in the Bhagavatam that the Lord within the heart caused the elephant to raise um, uh, Maharaj and put him on his back triumphantly. Any other ways? That's right, boil, boiling oil. <clears throat> Anybody ever had hot oil on them? Yeah, especially those who are in the kitchen, right? There was one devotee, a um, friend of ours, Divya Singer, he was making halava once and he spilt uh, like hot sugar water on him. Big time, he had to go to the hospital for it. He recovered. But you can also imagine boiling oil. When you get a burn, it doesn't just burn then and there, it continues to burn for days afterwards. But Prahlad Maharaj wasn't affected in the slightest. Anything else? That's right, yeah. I think that was one of the first things he did. Throw him in a pit of snakes and we'll see Prahlad squirm. <laughs> so this is what happened, yeah. You, you imagine your snakes are really, really dangerous and especially if you, if you step on them. So imagine getting thrown into a pit full of snakes, poisonous snakes. You'd probably die before you even got there, die of a heart attack out of fear. Prahlad Maharaj didn't stop chanting. He kept chanting. And what else? He put him on an island where there was a hurricane, didn't he? And uh, Ian, did you want to offer one? So although Hiranya Kashipu tried to kill Prahlad in every conceivable way, he wasn't harmed. On the other hand, we see that Hiranya Kashipu he did some uh, very severe austerities for a long, long time. Was it 10,000 years he did or something? Standing on the tips of his toes. Such austerity no one knows. He was, uh, and uh, <clears throat> to, the, to the effect that he was uh, creating disturbances within the universe. And finally, Lord Brahma came to him and says, Hey, Hirani Kashpu, what do you want? You can just imagine Lord Brahma thinking, Here we go, another demon just about to create havoc, and I've got to give him a benediction. <laughs> so uh, he says, I want to be immortal. <clears throat> he says, well, my dear Hanya Kashpu, even that I cannot do, because my life is only, how long is Lord Burma's life? A hundred of Burma's years, exactly. <laughs> and how long is one year? <laughs> a hundredth of his life. <laughs> long, long time. Is it, is it a thousand Divya Yugas make one day? Is that right? Well, Divya Yuga is like Satya, Treta, Dwapar and Kali combined. That's one Divya Yuga or Maha Yuga. So a thousand of those is one day of Brahma. And there's so many days in a year, so many years in his life. So it's inconceivable to us. We're just like a one day fly in comparison to Lord Brahma. <clears throat> So he says, well, my dear Rani Kashpu, you want immortality, but I don't have that myself, so I cannot give you what I do not have. So Rani Kashpu, being very clever, says, well, Lord Brahma, grant me this, that I may never be killed in the land, on the land or in the sky. He said, I comply. Then grant me this, that I may never be killed by a man or a beast. That's the least. That I may never be killed by any weapon. I don't know any rhyme for that one. <laughs> Actually, I'm just quoting. There was a there was a Krishna stories tape which was about this drama, so I didn't make these rhymes up. I'm just recalling them from when I used to listen to these pastimes every night. Actually, my wife uh, <clears throat> was brought up in Guruko, and she said, you know, as a child they used to listen to bedtime stories like the killing of Pralambasura, <laughs> 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 the killing of Hiranya Kashipu, and stuff like that. And you think bedtime stories? They never had nightmares. It's interesting, isn't it? Just so divine. 
these pastimes. It's not like some horror stories. Then kids are like, oh, I can't go to sleep looking under the bed, looking in the cupboard, see if the bogeyman's there. <clears throat> but these pastimes of the Lord, and they're even in this uh, very fearsome form of Lord and Singedev, it's very attractive to the devotees. Lord and Singedev is known as a thunderbolt to the demons and as soft as a rose to the devotees. This is the wonderful, one of the wonderful aspects of Lord and Singedev. So he asked for various things that I cannot be killed during the day or during the night. That's all right. In, indoors or outdoors. And uh, so every conceivable way that you could get killed, he was thinking, great, I've sold it. He can't give me immortality, but there's no way anyone can kill me in any situation. No man, no beast, neither day nor night, neither indoors nor outdoors, in the land or in the sky. Anything like that, there was no way that he could be killed, as far as he was concerned. So we see in on one hand, he tried every way to kill Prahlad Maharaj, and he was unsuccessful. And he tried every way to protect himself, and he was unsuccessful. <clears throat> so of course, uh, it may appear that Hiranyakesh was a total loser here, but um, nobody loses when Krishna's around. Because also, when he was being vanquished by Lord Nasingadev, then uh, I, talk, I think you remember what, what was happening. What did the Hiranyakeshpu experience when he was on the lap of Lord Nasingadev? Bliss. <laughs> Bliss. That's what happened. <clears throat> yeah, he was, uh, he remembered that he was actually taking part in the Lord's pastimes. This is the Lord's kindness. Even in Kurukshetra, when so many people were killed, they were killed in the presence of the Lord and they went back to Godhead. So wherever Krishna is, there's always auspiciousness for everyone. <clears throat> and uh, this is the, to substantiate his promise that his devotee would never perish. <clears throat> then when Hiranyakashipu asked Prahlad, it was probably even a rhetorical question, you know, is he in this pillar? So first of all, of course, the sequence is that uh, Hiranyakashipu killed, tried to kill Prahlad in many different ways. And then he says, ah, I see you have some mystic powers. Where did you get these mystic powers from? And of course, Plaid Maharaj's answer just infuriated Hiranya Kashyapu even more. He says, from the same place as you, from Vishnu. <laughs> and he says, who is this Vishnu? Who is this God? Better still, where is he? Is he here? Is he here? Is he in this pillar? <clears throat> and it said that when uh, <clears throat> Hiranya Kashyapu challenged Pralad Maharaj, you know, is your Lord in this pillar? He was mocking him. But Pralad Maharaj looked at the pillar, Shushi Kodin Time and Prashashi Ki, and Lord Nasingdev winked at Pralad Maharaj from in the pillar. <clears throat> so this is the best method of self-defense. Sometimes people get caught up in trying to learn karate, kung fu, and things like that, thinking they'll be able to save themselves. I mentioned before, uh, there was one person I knew who was a really expert at Aikido, and everybody kind of honored him. He was like, even the hard men wouldn't go near him. You know, they would generally, <clears throat> you know, there's a pecking order amongst the hard guys. They want to see, oh, you think you're tough, you think you're tougher than me, and then there's some fight, and then there's some pecking order, and then everybody gets a reputation. But this guy, he never created any trouble, but nobody went near him because they understood that he was an expert. But unfortunately, he got cancer and he couldn't defend himself against that. And he died fairly young. <clears throat> so we may try to protect ourselves in so many ways, like perhaps we get the healthiest diet. It's like we had one very advanced devotee, Prabhupada disciple, Mother Ratnaranjini. She was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And it was interesting because the, the National Health Service, they sent her a letter saying, okay, we advised that you... Uh, that you don't eat meat, fish or eggs, that you don't smoke, you don't drink, and all these things. And she, she was just laughing. She says, I've not done those things for years. And look, she was so cool, actually. <clears throat> she was just laughing, making a joke about it. And uh, 
So this is the situation of the devotees that you know we can't we're not destined to live forever in this body. We could live the healthiest life possible, but um there is planned obsolescence and there's karma. This karma means that sometime we don't know when uh, our time will be up and we'll be evicted from this body. Uh, our rent has already been paid by our previous karmic activities. And when that rent is, uh, <clears throat> runs out, then it's time to go out and find another apartment. So despite all of Hirani Kashibu's efforts, then uh, he couldn't kill um, Prahlad Maharaj. He even tried to poison him. He tried to trick him. He says, oh, Prahlad, you know, I see you've got some very mystic powers, so come, come and enjoy with your father here. Come and enjoy for some time. So he made a big feast and he tried to get Prahlad to eat. And uh, of course, he'd poisoned the food so much to kill many full grown men. And uh, so Prahlad, what did he do? He started offering it. He says, What are you doing? He says, I'm offering it to Krishna. He says, Never mind this, just eat. <laughs> and he, he offered it, not something to be done at home. He offered this food with poison in it and he wasn't affected. So at that point, Rani Kashipu, the last straw was there and he picked up Prahlad Maharaj. And you can imagine uh, Rani Kashipu was so powerful that even the demigods, controllers of the elements, material nature, they were terrified of him. And Prahlad was a small boy. So such force he was thrown to the ground, but Prahlad was just experiencing bliss the whole way through. <clears throat> so as I said, uh, don't try to eat anything which is poison. It will affect you unless you've got the faith of Prahlad Maharaj. And don't even try that. <clears throat> Just wait to see what Krishna puts in front of you. Uh, so this is when the last straw was there and he finally decided to personally try to kill him himself. And at that point, <clears throat> Lord Nisangadev said, okay, enough playing around here. Your time's up here in the Kenshipu. And when Lord Nisangadev burst from the pillar, of course, and just sort of backtracking then uh, the story is that is he in this pillar? Yes, he's everywhere. Then I'll kill him. So he struck the column with his fist and Lord Nisingadev appeared. So uh, does anybody remember what was Hurin Kashipu's uh, reaction when he first seen Lord Nisingadev? He sneezed, exactly. <laughs> what happened? Anybody remember? Um, that probably came later. Yeah. Yeah, he was struck with wonder. First of all, he was just like so much struck with wonder that he's, uh, his false ego was checked. <laughs> but then it came back quickly. And it's like he decided he would fight. Now, Hiranya Kashpu was like, some type, so every day we read this uh, or we sing. The Nusinga Pranams, uh, Tanu Bringam, is it, is it that, what's the wasp, name for wasp again? A wasp like demon. Wasp, is it Bringa? Yeah. And so, so he was like a wasp in comparison to Lord Nusingadev. He was so small, he was insignificant, but still, he's such a powerful ego that he decided to fight Lord Nisingadev, it was just described as being like a firefly or like sort of like a, a moth flying into a, a fire. <clears throat> he was simultaneously attracted to the Lord. He was thinking, well, what is this wonderful form? But then, you know, his ego come back again. <clears throat> Interesting, just uh, as I was saying that, I was reminded of one incident which happened uh, on New Road, which is just down the hill here, second on the left. As you walk down there, there used to be a gate of one of the neighbors' house came from back garden. It was an iron gate. And there was a huge Alsatian dog used to come. Anybody walked by it would just race to it and just terrify everybody, like bark very loudly. <clears throat> and I'd forgotten all about it. And I was walking, it was right up at my face. And he'd come up just all of a sudden. They used to like, he used to like surprising you. He had such an ego. It's like, ha, huh, I'm the Lord. This is my territory. Don't come near it. <clears throat> and the Lord of all I survey. So he 
he came and he barked very loudly in my ear. And just out of reaction, I turned around and went, Hare Krishna, and he stopped. And he's, he's like, his false ego was checked, just like Karanya Kashipu. <laughs> then, he, then his ego came back again and he started barking, but his bark had lost its bite by that time. You're like, woof, woof. <laughs> nah. He says, I don't believe you. <laughs> you're at it. You're a spirit soul, thinking you're a dog. <clears throat> And so this is sometimes what happens by the Lord's mercy, Hiranyakashipu, uh, got to take part in the Lord's pastimes and ultimately he gained uh, the shelter of the Lord again and Prahlad marriage was saved. And this is testament to us all that we take shelter in Lord and sing if he won't let us down. So the Lord says, don't worry, I'm present here. And this is also what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. If we surrender to him, we don't have to worry about any karmic reaction we think we may be due. We've all done things in the past we're not proud of. We've all done things in the past which were due some karmic reaction. But by the, but by the mercy of uh, Guru and Krishna, just like today some devotees are going to take initiation, and the spiritual master is so kind that he takes on the karma of the disciple so that the disciple can make advancement and his path can be cleared. So this is a very important thing that when we take these vows to follow the spiritual master, that we don't take it cheaply and then just uh, dump our sinful activities on him by continuing uh, nonsense. But we taking shelter of the spiritual master, taking shelter of the Lord, is something which we continually do. It's not that we take shelter one time and then that's the job done, as we're saying. But we have to continue to take that shelter every day. And uh, like Sachin Andermaj was saying that in the beginning of Krishna consciousness, now the beginning could mean first six months, could mean first year, could mean the first 40 years, depending on our endeavor. It's not just a matter of I've resided in the temple for 50 years, so I must be pure by now. <clears throat> it's not physical association, but it's actually how much we apply ourselves and take shelter of the Lord's internal energy. So um, if I continue to take shelter, then, uh, yes, so, yeah, such an undermaj was saying that in the beginning, we have to keep on putting effort in, keep on putting effort. The alarm clock goes off in the morning, we're thinking, no, not again, it can't be true. Can't be that time already, this alarm clock must be faulty, let's get another one. I know one devotee, I won't mention their name because they're in the temple at the moment, they had eight alarm clocks. And uh, I happened to be sharing the room with that person. And of course, I heard all of them, but he didn't hear any of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> But that's the nature of material energy, isn't it? Probably the devotee was just having like some ecstatic dream in Sankirtan and thought it was just like a fire brigade going by or the police chasing them. Yes, so um, we, <clears throat> we may hear the alarm clock first thing in the morning thinking, no, it just feels like I've just closed my eyes. Somebody's tricked me. Somebody must have moved the alarm clock. I just fell asleep. Somebody's moved all the alarm clocks in the ashram. It's some kind of practical joke. <clears throat> but if we just make that effort, we say, okay, so preparing for getting up in the morning means we start the night before. It's like, okay, my dear mind, we're going to take rest now so that tomorrow we can get up and have another go at being Krishna conscious. I was staying out at Kusum Sarovar once, and myself and uh, my godbrother, we'd been doing a lot of traveling, so we were a bit tired. And uh, the old lady there, Ma, she, um, <clears throat> she was quite tolerant. She allowed us to have a lie-in for a couple of days, but then it started becoming a habit. So she kindly took us aside and said, okay, you should pray to your bed. My dear bed, don't let me sleep any longer than six hours. Get me up at this time. So what she was doing was preparing her mind. She was telling us to prepare her mind that we don't uh, over, oversleep or anything else like that. We, we, <clears throat> we, we engage our mind in a kind. We don't fight against the mind. That is the nature of the mind as well. It's another trap. <clears throat> so we can keep on putting effort in and effort and effort. And then soon after some time, of the more effort we put in, then soon the momentum uh, will, will carry us. 
But we always have to be vigilant in the material world. And in this way, always being vigilant to take shelter on Krishna at every step. And taking shelter on Krishna doesn't mean to say we ignore the devotees and uh, you know, some devotees giving you instruction, you think, you know, forget it, I'm off to the deities to pray to get an answer to this. You know, sometimes Krishna is speaking through the devotees, sometimes Krishna speaks through the non devotees, so even more so through the devotees. So we should be uh, attentive to hearing, you know, especially if we're looking for some answer uh, or we're looking for some direction, so how we can advance in devotional service. If we're praying like that, then Krishna will give the direction. And it may come from a variety of uh, sources. So <clears throat> by manifesting his form as Lord Nisingadev, then Lord Brahma's promise was kept intact. Lord Vishnu is so intelligent that despite the huge intelligence of Hiranyakashipu, and you know, if you were to hear this pastime for the first time and you hear all the benedictions that Hiranyakashipu would receive, you'd think, well, how can he be killed? It's impossible, isn't it? He can't be killed at any certain time, day or night. Land and sky, a man, beast, you know, he covered all bases. And what happened? He wasn't killed in the day or night, but killed in the twilight, dusk, which is why we're fasting till dusk. As interesting enough, you know, Jan Andamaj was pointing out, I thought we were fasting for the appearance of Lord Nisingdev, not the disappearance of Rani Kashipu. <laughs> he disappeared at dusk. <laughs> so, but there was some fight went on before that. <clears throat> he wasn't killed indoors or outdoors, but in the threshold. The threshold of the building is neither in nor out, is it? And um, by a man, neither, but neither by a man nor a beast, but by this uh, wonderful form of Lord and Singdev, which could, was indescribable. The best way it could be described was half man, half lion. But it's not like okay, which half was lion, which half was man. But it was just uh, considered so wonderful that you couldn't just, you couldn't understand, you know, what this form was. And of course, also wasn't neither man nor beast, but was also the supreme personality of Godhead, who is neither man nor beast. So I thought we'd just finish with uh, a little encouraging story. Um, there's this nice little book, which was printed, uh, produced by uh, Mayapur. It's gone Mayapur. If you ever have the opportunity to see Lord Nisingadev, we see his photograph in the altar here. He's a wonderful deity of Lord Nisingadev. And to the non-devotees, he can be very terrifying. Uh, but to the devotees, even though he looks so fierce, then uh, he is uh, very attractive. So this is one young, back in 2005, the one uh, young devotee, Revati Sundari Devidasi, who was age eight at the time, was climbing on the roof of the Bamboo Playhouse in the Grihasta Park in Sri Maipur Dam. To her great surprise, she fell through the roof, landing on her head, and the roof caved in on top of her. She, she was in shock for an hour, shaking and crying and incoherent. She also had concussion. Gora Baba, our wonderful homeopathic Vaishnava doctor, treated her for concussion and shock and suggested a scan. After three days, Ravity woke up in the night, vomiting black blood. We rushed her off to Calcutta. On the way, clear fluid was leaking from her nose, then violent nosebleed started. Doesn't sound very good, does it? <clears throat> we took her straight to a good paediatrician who immediately called in the top neurologist in the city. He ordered a CT scan and then, seeing the results, he sent us to a very good neurosurgeon who had his own private hospital. Ravity was admitted straight away. The symptoms continued through the night and we found out that the clear fluid from her nose was the blain brain fluid CFS leaking out. The scan clearly showed a fracture in the floor of her brain from which the brain fluid was escaping. Also her brain was swollen and blood was pooling there causing pressure. She had extreme pain in her head which was unabated since the accident. The doctors worked on her for a couple of days giving her medicine intravenously. The white of her eyes became totally red she was like a limp rag with little interest in anything. 
Finally, the doctors said that the next morning early, they would do a special scan showing all the sections of her brain to determine the exact extent of the injuries and then would probably decide to operate to repair the damage. They would tell us their decision by 9 a.m. I phoned Pankajangri Prabhu explaining the situation and asking him to please pray to Lord Nsingadev. He immediately said he would do a full puja between 5 and 7 a.m. complete with Abhishek and everything else. This was the time of the special scan. The next morning, when I met the, the doctors, they were looking amazed and said that the new scan showed that the injuries were miraculously almost healed. All the symptoms such as pain, violent nosebleeds, brain fluid leakage, vomiting, etc. had abruptly stopped. When I went in to see Ravity, she was sitting up in bed looking bright-eyed and fresh and her eyes were fully white again. Gravity's comment on all this was, Grandma, next time something happens to me, please don't waste time with the doctors. Just bring me straight to Lord Nsingadev. Nsingadev, <laughs> Bhagavan, a key. <clears throat> so there's a few nice stories in this book. There was also one young uh, Gurukul girl in South Africa. She was struck by a car and she went way up in the air and came down and devotees thought that she was, you know, she was a goner. And she said that Lord Nsingadev caught her and uh, she survived. She's seen Lord Nsingadev. <clears throat> so Lord Nsingadev is real. He's not some historical personality. And <clears throat> we can pray to Lord Nsingadev that he protects our back to Lata Beach. Lord Nsingadev is very enthusiastic to protect the Sankatan devotees. You know, many devotees have got stories of when they were on Harinam, Sankatan, or book distribution or other situations where they were in serious danger and they prayed to Lord Nisingadev and achieved uh, his shelter. They obtained protection. And we can experience that too. If we pray to Lord Nisingadev also, just as he ripped apart the demon who ran Kashipu, then please rip apart the lust, the anger and greed which is within our heart and turn us, uh, <clears throat> help us become a great devotee. So we'd just like to ask anyone, any questions or comments, anything they'd like to share? Pip. Hare Krishna, thank you. I was watching a lecture from Sachinandan Swami, and he was talking about um, a statue that they found in Germany. It's meant to be the oldest statue that scientists can date. It's over 40,000 years old. And they call it the Lion Man. It's a um, half man, half lion form. Um, there's a Wikipedia page on it. It's quite interesting, but it's just strange to think of, you know, this eternal um, supreme. Um, you know, is known about throughout the land once upon a time. And I just wanted to share that. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, um, which yoga was it? That Lord Nisingadev was the presiding deity, wasn't it? Which is it was it um Dwapar Yuga? That's right. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes we chant that uh, at uh, uh, um Kirtan programs we chant this Ugram Vira Mahavishnam Jalantam Sabatomakam Nishingam Bishanam Badram Chimnachum Namyaham Basically saying that we offer our obeisances unto Lord Nisingadev, who is feared by fear personified. <clears throat> yeah, and so we we um, take shelter in Lord Nisingadev. Also in Chaitanya Leela, when the Chan Kazi tried to stop, or he ordered that the Sanctan movement be stopped, and he banished, no, sorry, he banned the devotees from coming onto the streets with the Harinam party. <clears throat> so Lord Chaitanya had organized a civil disobedience march, a big protest march with the torchlight procession and uh, thunderous kirtan. And at the same time, Lord Nsingadev appeared to Chan Kazi. He was lying in his bed, sleeping, 
and they woke and they found Lord and Singh Dave straddled across his chest and he was just like lightly scratching his chest with his nails. And he says, you know, don't you dare interfere with the Sangtan movement. <laughs> <clears throat> so when he woke up and he was terrified and he seen that the marks were actually on his chest and then Lord Chaitanya was at the door. He didn't want to answer, he was absolutely terrified. But Lord Chaitanya was very, very kind and he said, he called him uncle because why did why did he call Chan Kazi uncle? So I speak up. The Lombard Chakravati is maternal um, uncle. Uh, they were studying together in the same school or something like that with uh, Chan Kazi. That's maybe one, but also in Krishna Leela and the Goragonadesh Tapika, then uh, Chan Kazi was. In Krishna Lila, who was he? Kamsa, correct. He was Kamsa, <clears throat> who was Krishna's uncle. He also was inimical to Krishna at that time, but this time in Chaitanya Lila, he got the mercy. And there, when uh, Lord Chaitanya addressed him as my dear uncle, you know, and then he spoke from the Quran and says, you know, this is uh, bona fide what we're doing, chanting names of God and uh, also being vegetarian and things. So, <clears throat> Chan Kazi said, okay, nobody should interfere with the Sangtan movement. And this uh, shield here, of course, it has a Vaishnava sign in the middle, but the shield here with like the kind of crescent moons on either side, this, this was the symbol of the Chan Kazi. And the devotees, for their own protection, used to carry this in Harinam, because <clears throat> no one would carry that unless they were authorized by the Chan Kazi, who was a ruler in that area at the time. And he put, out, he put out the word that no one should interfere with the Sangtan movement or else they'd be in trouble. So he got the protection of Lord and Singh Dave came through. So as long as we keep on taking shelter in the Lord, then whatever obstacles are there, we can be sure that, that the Lord will remove them. We just have to keep on taking shelter of the Lord and the Lord's devotees. Any final comments or questions? Yeah, do, do you, would you like to speak about that? But yeah, I'm not sure of the details. They had an expert carver somewhere in South India <clears throat> who was going to carve the Nishingadev deity. And the devotees were very anxious for the deity to be installed, but it seemed like the carver was taking his time and the deity was almost ready to be moved. And it was a really big process. They have to put, in, put the deity in a truckload of sand to protect it from bouncing around on the road. And the uh, stone carver wanted to go on holiday, so he was putting the, de the devotees off, saying, he's not ready, he's not ready. And he was carving the Nishingadev deity in a straw hut. And all of a sudden, the hut burned and burst into flames and started burning down his compound. And he called up and he said, he's ready. <laughs> he's ready to come. So. That's right. And also, uh, so the way they transported Lord Nishingadev, First of all, they couldn't find anyone to carve him because this form of the Lord was so ferocious that everybody was afraid to carve this deity. <clears throat> and then finally they found someone to do it. And then, as uh, Prabhu was saying, this uh, took place. The Lord's pastime decided, no, I'm ready to go, organize my transport. So they got a truck, they fill up the sand, and they put the deity in the truck of sand so that there's no damage. So you can imagine he's driving through so many states and usually when you're going through these states and you have to require paperwork and there's always bribes involved, you know, really heavy stuff. If you don't give a bribe, then you get big trouble, you know. <clears throat> and um, so whenever he came to any toll or border crossing and they looked in and they seen Lord and they was like, okay, no problem, on you go. <laughs> no bribe required. Well, it's a very a wonderful deity of Lord and Singh Dev. And of course, we have Lord and Singh Dev's picture here on the altar and the Shalagram uh, deity of Lord and Singh Dev. And for the program today, um, we're just going to finish class now. And then there will be, um, I think it's half 10, we're going to start the initiation procedures. <clears throat> and then uh, later on, we'll be starting the program here in the temple, 2 p.m. The Ragnath will send the program out to everybody and there'll be a print of it in the temple door and in Garanga Hall door. <clears throat> uh, so we'll have Kirtan for a couple of hours. We'll give an introduction 
to the festival. And there'll be Abhishek of Gandaki Prabhu's uh, wonderful Lord and Singadev Sheila. Uh, we won't be inviting the public to come and bathe. It'll be a short Abhishek. And then His Holiness Jan Andermaj will give a lecture on Lord and Singadev. And then there'll be Arty and that's it. Sorry, did somebody mention Prasad? <laughs> okay. Prasad Bhakta. Okay, Sri Nisangade Bhagavan Ki, Pralat Maharaj Ki, Paskonga Ravinda Ki, Sri Prabhupada Ki, Sri Sri Kodni Thai Maha Prasad Shri Ki, Sri Thai Gaur Premanande. Thai Gaur. His grace. Prabhupada Prana Prabhu Ki, Jai. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki, 